Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video, I wanted to talk about Titan, the moon of Saturn, the biggest moon of Saturn, the biggest moon that I would like to place around Earth and find out what happens, and also talk about Titan in general, describing some of the coolest facts about this beautiful moon. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is Titan orbiting uh, the Saturn system and it is significantly bigger and more massive than every other moon in the system. And Titan is actually uh, a pretty, pretty cool object. So we're going to go ahead and start a new simulation here. And we're going to place Titan as the moon of Earth because I actually would like to see what happens if we had um, Titan instead of our own moon as the moon, as the satellite. So we're going to find out two things, or maybe three things. One of those things is going to be if Titan is going to become uh, terraformable or if it's going to actually become terraformed by placing it around Earth. We also are going to find out if it's actually going to significantly change the tidal effects on Earth. And then we're also going to find out if it's uh, going to become liquid and have no surface, or if it's going to have some kind of a solid sur surface that we can land and live on. So let's place Titan at a distance of about 100,000 kilometers away from uh, our planet Earth. This is about a third um, of the actual distance to our moon. And now that it's orbiting our planet Earth, we're actually going to observe various features here, including things like temperature and changes in composition, or I guess in uh, the actual uh, surface layer, because we know that Titan is ridiculously cold. The actual temperature here is less than 150 degrees Celsius, but that's far, far away orbiting Saturn. Now it's very, very close to the sun at only one astronomical unit, so it's going to get a lot more sunlight and it has very thick atmosphere as well. So for all we know, it's actually going to warm up and become relatively uh, mild and habitable. So first thing I had to do is I actually had to change the atmospheric uh, pressure of this beautiful um, moon because uh, in game, it's actually uh, um, set at about one bar. In reality, it is close to about 1.6 bar or about 1.6 times the atmosphere of Earth. And so you kind of saw that it started smoking for a little bit, and that's because I also placed a little bit of water here. So there's a bit of water, there's a bit of um, atmosphere that kind of evaporated due to the solar effects. But for as long as it stays within the magnetic uh, field of Earth, it should be protected from everything. However, since this moon actually has no magnetic field of its own, it's very likely going to lose all of its uh, liquid water and... Uh, a lot of its atmosphere as well, if it actually is so close uh, to the sun. Now, uh, let's actually talk a little bit more about the facts of Titan. So let's uh, let's maybe zoom in here and uh, just kind of place our moon next to it. So as you can see, it's actually a little bit bigger than the moon. As a matter of fact, about 50% bigger than the moon, uh, which makes Titan um, the uh, second largest moon in our solar system after Ganymede. Ganymede is the largest, and this is the second largest. And as a matter of fact, it's even bigger in size than Mercury. Mercury is actually would fit inside uh, Titan, but it is not as massive. Because of the lower density here, uh, Mercury actually does have a lot more mass. The mass here is only about 1.8 masses of moon, whereas Mercury is about eight times the masses of the moon. And compared to our planet Earth, it is obviously a lot smaller, making Earth a huge giant in comparison to this moon. Now, the cool thing about Titan is that it is actually the only other object in our solar system that not only has a really thick atmosphere where we can kind of stand and uh, survive without essentially dying from depressurization, uh, but here uh, we also have liquid lakes. We have liquid lakes, we have um, oceans of essentially um, hydrocarbons, things like methane and possibly some ammonia elements that uh, due to the cold temperature became liquid. Now, if we place it so close to the sun, all of those things will evaporate and will escape into the atmosphere, giving this moon um, quite a lot more uh, greenhouse effect. So I'm going to try to see if I can add that here, but maybe not. It started to evaporate for some reason, uh, which will, of course, increase the surface um, temperature as well. So the surface temperature will jump dramatically. But because of the way that uh, this uh, moon is composed and because of the way that its um, hazy atmosphere is structured, a lot of the light here is actually reflected back into space. So it does have a relatively high albedo, 
uh, with very, very little light actually reaching the surface of this moon. And this is what the surface currently looks like. It's basically all ice. For some reason, the temperature actually jumped down when I, um, when I changed the greenhouse effect, but it will go up eventually. And the atmosphere of this moon is actually quite incredible. As a matter of fact, it extends much, much higher than the atmosphere of our own planet Earth. And you can see this value um, if you go under temperature. Right here it says scale height. It's at 43 kilometers compared to our own planet Earth, uh, which only has this value at... Uh, 8.4 kilometers, so it's a lot, a lot higher. And because of this, uh, for a long time, we actually thought this was the largest moon in our solar system until we came close to it and we saw that most of this um, layer that we see is actually just the atmosphere, which actually is composed mostly of nitrogen, just like on, a, on our own planet Earth, and with about 5% being methane. So instead of oxygen, like on Earth, this is actually methane, which is very interesting because this suggests, or I guess hints on maybe the fact that there could be some kind of a different life here because we've, we have detected unusual chemical reactions in this beautiful atmosphere and those reactions could not be explained just yet so maybe just maybe there's actually some kind of a methane based life um, in the atmosphere or possibly on the surface of this moon but this doesn't change the fact that there is actually quite a lot of oxygen here anyway so if we were to terraform this moon one day it would easily become uh, filled with oxygen and would easily support human life as well now, unfortunately, this game doesn't really simulate the liquid lakes here, uh, so we don't really see any liquid stuff on the surface, uh, but maybe we can try this uh, this way. Maybe we can cheat a little bit, and if I were to re-add Titan right now and uh, try to maybe remove the atmosphere like this, now we would actually have some liquid... Uh, well, I guess this, this was water for a second there, and suddenly disappeared and became ice but um this essentially is the only other object in our solar system that actually has liquid on the surface that is very very complex and has quite a lot of complex uh interaction going on including things like waves of course and surf which we actually have um seen from from outer space in other words there is actually something called hydrological cycle on this moon which we would love to study one day because this is essentially suggesting that there's a lot of really complex stuff going on on the surface of this beautiful moon. But unlike our planet Earth, nothing here is really water related. And so most of the uh, cycle involves things like methane and uh, even things like cyanide gas. And methane rain here is probably quite common with uh, methane ice and uh, methane rain, meth methane liquid, basically interacting and creating all kinds of cycles that are very similar to the cycles with water on our planet Earth. And so basically the combination of the fact that there's thick atmosphere and of course liquid oceans on liquid seas on the surface makes this a very interesting, very unusual world, kind of similar to our own planet Earth, of course. Now, of course, it is not exactly the same. It's definitely uh, different in many, many, diff uh, many ways, including the fact that nothing here is really liquid water and it's very, very cold. It's kind of dark as well. But um, on the other hand, this is probably the most Earth-like moon in our solar system that we, I think, we need to definitely land on again and possibly col colonize. Now, I've talked about the um, Huygens probe landing in one of the previous videos, and I've also discussed Titan in more detail in one of the previous videos as well. But in this particular video, I really just wanted to see what would happen if it actually orbits our planet Earth and if we can try to maybe terraform it as well. Now, we've, we have actually landed on the surface and we've taken pictures, um, but unfortunately, we haven't taken enough to learn about the composition and, of course, about the actual interaction of various ices and various um, things like methane and water on the surface. And so, all in all, this is actually a very interesting world. It's very, very similar to Earth in the sense that it has very thick atmosphere, it has liquid uh, that interacts with, each, with itself and with each other, and it has um, some kind of a chemical reaction that seems to change things in the atmosphere. It also definitely has climate changes, it has uh, various seasons, and having landed on it, we've discovered that it also has things like wind that, that we actually heard and I've talked about in the, one of the previous videos. Now, what is really cool about this is that that's really all we know about Titan. So this is definitely a moon that we need to investigate in a lot more detail. And so let's actually try to see if we can terraform this or at least make it similar to planet Earth 
even though or considering the fact that we would probably never be able to move it to this particular region of space. But nevertheless, it's orbiting Earth, nothing really happened so far, the tidal interactions haven't really destroyed anyone or anything, and the moon seems to be enjoying um, having a partner a companion satellite as well, although there might be actually a collision coming sometime soon. And so let's uh, maybe see if we can terraform this and make this a habitable um, liquid world with uh, an interesting composition. So one thing I forgot to mention is that we've discovered this uh, moon a long time ago, back in 1655, like way, way, over 350 years ago, essentially, way, way, way back then. This was discovered by a Dutch astronomer by the name of um, Christian Huygens, and so the probe that landed on, uh, on Titan was actually named after him as well. And when it landed on Titan, it was probably one of the most complex missions ever. And I've talked about this mission in one of the previous videos. You can definitely check it out in the link that you see. Anyway, so let's uh, try this. So we're going to place Titan right here and give it a little bit of water, which seems to not want to stay on the surface. It seems to actually evaporate, which I'm guessing is because of the lack of magnetic field. Let's try this again. Let's see what actually happens. I'm going to decelerate time. And yeah, that's water evaporating and basically the surface temperature drops dramatically. The water evaporation is happening because of the super powerful uh, solar radiation that's causing all of the water to escape in the same way that both Mars and Venus lost liquid water a long time ago as well. Now we can actually change that by giving uh, this beautiful moon a little bit of a magnetosphere or magnetic field. So let's uh, actually enable it and start giving it just a little bit enough to protect itself. This can be done by basically creating these huge, huge loops around the moon, the surface of the moon, and then running a relatively powerful electric field through it. If we could do that, we could maybe create uh, a somewhat weak, but um, nevertheless functional magnetic field that could kind of protect the atmosphere and liquid water on the surface. So now that we have this, let's add a little bit more water. Hopefully it will not escape anymore. Change the surface pressure back to about 1.6 bar. And now let's play around with things like albedo and um, possibly infrared emissivity to try to basically increase the greenhouse effect until it starts making this uh, moon relatively warm for us to survive on. And having played around with these various settings and basically changing the albedo to the value of about 35%, which is kind of similar to Earth, changing the infrared emissivity a little bit as well, and uh, essentially making greenhouse effects similar to the one on Earth, and this can be achieved by uh, binding some of the greenhouse effects here um, using, I don't know, bacteria or some kind of a technological tool that we, we don't really have on Earth just yet, but we can possibly develop in the future. We were able to achieve, um, well, the temperature here is a little bit hot right now, 48 degrees Celsius, but it, it is slowly dropping. I actually believe it's going to be very, very close to the temperature on Earth. Uh, I'm going to also check some of the parameters here. So we're going to disable show uh, magnetosphere. It says Earth similarity is cur currently 60%. Life likelihood is zero, but the similarity to planet Earth is very, very high. So let's actually wait um, a few months and see what this beautiful moon becomes. Now, looks like I don't actually have any more water left here. So I may actually have to uh, add a little bit of water to make this slightly more liquid. Uh, but I have a feeling that as soon as I add water, it's going to start evaporating just as it did before. And look at that, the server temperature drops as well. This is a very interesting bug slash effect that they've just discovered. Look at how fast water evaporates. I'm not really sure why this is happening. So, all right, so this game is making it very difficult for me to terraform Titan orbiting in the same uh, region of space as our, as our Earth does, but we're not going to give up. We're gonna keep trying. And it looks like no matter how hard I try, no matter how many times I uh, reset the water setting, water just kind of evaporates and disappears. So maybe we can do it slightly differently by basically bringing water from space using an asteroid. So let's actually choose a small asteroid like Chariklo and launch it at uh, Titan and see if this actually changes something. We're going to basically launch it right here, change the um, materials to essentially mostly or everything is going to be water and uh, watch the effects of the collision as well as the changes in Titan um, composition 
as it receives all of this cool water that just arrived from space. Now, it turned into what seems to be a water world. It's also possibly very, very hot, but its temperature is dropping yet again. So will this actually turn this into a terraformed world or not? And it looks like we may have failed again. It seems like the water just doesn't want to stay on the surface here. It keeps evaporating, it keeps disappearing, and the surface temperature keeps dropping down as well. Now, okay, so can we do something else? We've tried the asteroids, we've tried uh, using manual settings. How about we move it a little bit closer to Earth and possibly use the actual tidal effects of our planet Earth to warm it up. So we're going to move it a little bit closer, not close enough to for it to fall apart, but close enough for it to receive a little bit more heat from tidal effects. And let's see how, how close this will be actually. And it seems that even with these settings, it just doesn't want to be terraformed. I don't think I'm getting enough tidal effects. Oh, and look at that. It just sort of fell apart due to the uh, Roche limit. Basically, it reached the part of um, orbit around Earth where the tidal forces basically broke it apart. And now it collided with our planet. Great. Not exactly what I wanted at all. So, what have we learned from this experience? Well, one is that, yes, we can definitely try to terraform Titan and make it very Earth-like, but unfortunately, due to some kind of a bug in the game, it's currently, um, or seems to be impossible to make it uh, terraform permanently. It just doesn't seem to want to uh, keep that temperature that we want to have to maintain liquid water. You can either have warm Titan with no water, which is basically this right here. It has no water whatsoever, but it does have a relatively comfortable temperature of uh, 7.69 degrees Celsius. Or you can have Titan with water, but also a ridiculously low temperature of about minus 70 degrees uh, Celsius. And look at that. I think the, some of the water is actually making it to the Titan here, reducing its temperature a little bit. That was a pretty cool effect, something I haven't seen before, because there's actually little fragments here that reach the other Titan. But other than that, we've also learned that I guess it's very, very possible for us to have another moon, such as Titan, orbiting around our planet Earth and not really affected that much either. Unless, of course, it comes too close, falls apart and smacks into planet Earth like it just did a few minutes ago. Anyway, so that's really all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to talk about the fact that you can definitely place Titan around our planet Earth. Look at this huge explosion. This is humongous. Australia has been destroyed completely. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the facts of this beautiful moon. As a matter of fact, my favorite moon in our solar system. And I also wanted to discuss the science and the possibility of maybe one day terraforming it as well. We'll definitely talk more about Titan as the um, Cassini-Huygens mission comes to an end sometime closer to um, end of 2017. But until then, this is all I wanted to do and talk about in this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who might enjoy watching uh, or learning through various video games. And come back here tomorrow to learn something completely different, something new, and something interesting. Now, this Titan came to our planet Earth relatively close. Let's actually see what happens in a few years. Maybe one of them actually collides with another, and maybe, just maybe, they might create another beautiful explosion. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Space out, game leader, and as always, bye-bye. And that was a pretty cool collision just now. It just kind of scratched the surface, fell apart, and look at that, it's back to being its own no normal self. And we also created a ring around our planet Earth. Absolutely brilliant.